uh, about how the brain works and, and how we remember things. Um, so it's there. Uh, of course, you don't have to read it. Uh, there's no exam. Uh, but it might help you if you find you're uh, struggling in this or any other class. Right? The next thing you'll see is all the lectures posted. They're broken down by chapter. Uh, you'll see the uh, PowerPoints, the example problems. Right. So, um, so the PowerPoints are just your average PowerPoint. Uh, maybe not average. Uh, my PowerPoints are uh, guidelines for the lecture. So they are a brief overview of the things that I'm going to say in the lecture. So by no means is studying a PowerPoint going to be enough to uh, understand the material in this class and get you through it. What they are intended to be is a helpful way for you to follow along during the lecture um, or take notes on um, during the lecture, print it out with the notes pages, something like that. They are the highlights, right? And you'll notice that some things are highlighted more than others. Um, but uh, other than that, this is not just going to be read the PowerPoints um, in, in terms of uh, studying for this class. Okay? To go along with each of the lectures is a set of example problems. Okay. The example problems are example problems that I'm going to work during the lecture. So they're put into the lecture videos. Um, they're tied into the lecture video, so I'll every you know every so often during the lecture video, I'll take a break. I'll say, okay, we're going to work this example problem about what we did, just discussed. I would encourage you guys to print these out, right? So they are structured. Uh, they are structured so that there is space to work the problem alongside me. If we were in person, I would have I would work an example, then I would make everybody in class work an example. I would ask you, uh, random people, to give me the answers. Uh, so that we would all, you would get a chance to work them on your own. Obviously, we can't really do that in an asynchronous course, but I promise you, you will be much more successful in this class if you at least work these alongside me. Instead of just watching the video, watch the video and write it out. That's one of the things in the life hack about how memory works is that writing, actually physically writing things, helps you remember them better than watching it or typing it or doing anything else. Okay, so try to work it there are going instead of me being able to make you work a, a secondary problem i'm just going to tell you to work a secondary problem in the example video i'll say okay now stop and work the next problem and then i'll show you the answers for that and what you what the goal of that is is that you have a chance to do it without seeing me do it without the crutch of following along and then you're able to check whether you did it right when i give you the answers next that is the best way to see whether you've grasped and understood the material. Okay, so uh, there is uh, files here for everyone. I, again, I'm, I would encourage you to find a way to print them out. Uh, there's not that many total pages, so you can print them all out at uh, you know the university or from a, your friend or parent or, or whatever. Uh, it's a it it will help you a lot if you do it that way. Okay. So uh, those are all posted. Uh, there are the lecture and example videos. Uh, so we can click into this. Uh, these are the lecture videos for chapter two. They're all listed over here. So part one through five. Uh, the example videos are listed separately. All of these are um, all of these are posted on YouTube. Um, so that in the event that as you learn goes down, as it sometimes does, you will always be able to uh, get to the lectures uh, and and maybe you just go there first. Um, but you can also watch them straight through here. Uh, so this is the lecture for chapter one. The example videos are then posted. It's me working the example videos. If you click through to the YouTube channel, you can find it here. These are all listed uh, in a in playlists, um, so you can. Uh, you can watch the playlist uh, from uh, start to finish, or you can click through to whatever one you want. Uh, you'll see that at the end of all the videos, uh, the examples that I work in that part of the lecture are listed, so that you can click through and watch the example. And here's an you know here's an example where I'm working through the example uh, and talking about it. And then at the end of this, the next lecture will pop up, and you should be able to watch it all like that. Okay. Uh, so all the lectures are posted. Uh, you can just go straight to the channel uh, and uh, and you can find the playlists that are listed here uh, and you can start there. Now make sure that I, I have multiple classes. So I have videos for uh, more advanced finance classes that obviously you don't need uh, that you're I'm welcome to watch, but you certainly don't need. 
Uh, so make sure that you're watching the Fin 3680 and not, for instance, the Fin 4660 because the chapters will sometimes be the same. So you can come here and watch all the chapter two. Oh, that's 4660. You can watch all the chapter two lectures for this class. There's five of them. You can then watch the chapter two example problems. Uh, and they go hand in hand. Uh, so all the lectures are already posted. All the example videos are already posted. Uh, the lectures themselves go through a, uh, um, you'll, well, you'll see as you watch, they're intermixed between me and the slides, right? So they'll go back and forth. I try to make it as close to an in-person lecture as I can for me. Uh, so you can always just go to YouTube and watch the videos. Um, and there's a, and, but you can also always just get it uh, straight from as you learn. Okay. Uh, alongside that is, uh, um, or maybe it's better to say that one of the important parts of this class, particularly for uh, non-finance majors, but also for finance and accounting majors, is to uh, familiarize you with the lingo of the business world, particularly of the finance world. Okay, so there is a lot of language and terminology that is unique and different, and it has become so commonplace in the business world that people will say all of these acronyms and all of these terms and just expect that everyone listening knows what they're talking about. And of course, this is your introduction to the class, so I don't expect that you do that. And so anytime that I introduce a new term, I will stop and explain it. Um, but that is a big part of this class, so we'll do it a lot. Uh, and by the end of it, hopefully you'll be able to listen to someone talking about uh, WAC and, and networking capital and, and um, cash flow some assets or free cash flow and understand what all those things are. Someone says the discounted value of the future free cash flows. By the end of the class, hopefully that doesn't sound like Greek to you. Okay. That being said, that's one of the hardest parts is learning this new terminology because it's a new language. Uh, and uh, what I will try to do is talk about those things in the lectures and during the examples, but I also at points try to post uh, articles from the Wall Street Journal or other financial news um, uh, sources so that you can get an idea of how these are actually used, right? If you plan on going into the finance world, I highly, highly recommend that you start to keep up with financial news now, right? As sooner the better. You need to have a good background in what the hell is going on in the rest of the world in terms of finance and business uh, before you go out and try to find your place in it. I have personally been in job interviews at banks where they asked me questions like, name three things that are going on in the world and how this bank may or may not have to respond to it, right? And I've heard from students of mine uh, that have gone to other jobs where these kinds of current events things come up, right? What's going on with the oil market crash and how is that going to affect our firm's business, right? They're just trying to see if you're paying attention and if you have critical thinking skills. So starting to read the financial news is the only way that you're going to be able to know that, right? So one of the things I've done is I've posted Wall Street Journal articles that go along with uh, the things that we're going to talk about in this class, right? So here in the first lecture, we're going to be talking about accounting stuff. So we're going to be talking about taxes and how companies handle their taxes. And here's an article talking about that and how it's actually working in practice. Okay. Now, those of you that, and I expect that's most everybody, don't have a Wall Street Journal article access. You, you don't pay for it. Uh, and again, I would encourage you, particularly if you're a finance major, to pay for it. It's cheap as a student um, or relatively cheap. I also just post a Word document here uh, so that you can read the article even if you don't have the access. Now, that's not true on every single um, lecture. Uh, but I try to do some of that, okay? So there's always example problems. There's always uh, lecture videos. Uh, in some of the chapters, we have Excel examples, and uh, we'll talk about those, and we'll have lecture videos that cover those. Um, sometimes I, I have other documents, other things. Uh, for instance, this is a, uh, a picture of a, uh, a living bond from uh, the Amsterdam Water Authority from 1648, and a bond is a loan. So this is a loan document from the 1640s, right? So uh, I just have things that uh, that here that to go along with all the lectures and videos, uh, and I encourage you to uh, take at least take a look at all of them, make use of them. Okay. Now underneath all the lectures and example videos is the homework assignments. Uh, and the Excel project. Uh, they are all self-contained. They all have instructions. The homework is all based 
here on the project. It'll be available. It'll tell you when it's due. It has these instructions here. Uh, and I, you, I, you need to read the instructions before you do the homework because, because this is automated homework, it has very specific rules about entry and, and how to do the problems and how to round and things like that, that you need to follow or you're going to get it wrong. Okay. Now you'll be able to get into the quizzes, uh, their quizzes, but you'll be able to get into the homeworks, uh, on their availability date until their due date. And they'll be due at midnight on, uh, on the day that they're due. Okay. You'll have two attempts to do the homework. Uh, so you can do the first attempt. It will give you all the solutions and, and detailed, uh, help at the end of it. Uh, not always for every problem, but for the majority of the problems, there will be detailed help and solutions, how you are expected to solve the problem. It will then give you new numbers and new, some new problems, and you'll be able to do the second attempt with new numbers. Uh, and, uh, it will, I will always take the highest of the two attempts. Okay. Now, sometimes the grade book that's listed here, it's supposed to automatically do that. Sometimes it does not do that. Do not freak out about that. I can always see both attempts. You can always see your grades from both attempts just by clicking on the homework. I will go through at the end of the semester, take the highest attempt, no matter what. I keep my own grade book. This grade book here is just for your own edification. It's just so you can follow along. It doesn't have any implication on your uh, actual grades and, and how I record them. Okay. So uh, there's the eight homeworks listed here. They're already there. After that is exams. Uh, you uh, will have three exams and a final. You can see that they're already posted. Uh, what you will be able to see is the material for the first exam. Uh, you'll be able to see that there is a review file, a review solutions file, um, and an exam file, which again will open up. You'll be able to do it during the exam. Uh, you will uh, have 90 minutes to do each exam. The exams will close at midnight, so you will have to start 90 minutes before that, but you'll have a 24-hour period to do it. Uh, what uh, at the very top here is a formula sheet that uh, I would normally provide in person. Given that it's online, uh, you can sort of have a more extensive formula sheet if that's what you want, uh, note sheet, whatever. Um, you There is here a practice respondus exam. This is nothing but... Uh, uh, me asking you to download the, the Respondus browser, uh, hook up your webcam, uh, make sure that the system works for you before you take the first exam. So this is open from today, the first day of class, until the day before the first exam. If you do it, there it, and all that is is set it up, click yes and turn it down. I'll give you an extra credit point, so one point towards your final uh, grade which may be the difference uh, for, you know, between an 89 and a 90. Um, so there's nothing to do there except to make sure that you respond as works for you uh, so that you're not doing that uh, the day of the first exam. Okay. Otherwise, there's nothing here. Uh, uh, you'll click under the first exam. You'll do that like normal. Uh, there are, of course, several exams. Okay. The last thing down here at the bottom is calculator help. There are lots of information here. The uh, important one for us in this class is the, uh, at least if you're going to use the BA2 Plus, is this. This is the handheld calculator BA2 Plus guidelines. Uh, it is an example of every type of problem we will do on the calculator with button by button press help. How do you do time value of money? How do you do present value of a cash flow? There is an example here of each one of these and the buttons that you press. So press this button, press this button, press this button, press this button, and compute IOI, and there's your answer. Okay, so this is going to be your first step if you are having trouble with the calculator. Um, and the videos that I posted uh, didn't make it clear, or or you had some issue understanding that. Then YouTube, then, or me, you can always ask, and I can try to help. But this is a great resource. It's right here at the bottom of the page. The graphing calculators, there is a guide for using uh, the, the finding and using the functions. Again, there are functions in the graphing calculators for everything that the financial calculator can do. It is just different. So it's a different way to get there and a different way to do it. Uh, here are the instructions for doing the, that in the TI-83. I believe that they're the same or very close to the same in the TIs 86 and 89 and all that. I think they're, they stay the same, but I, again, I'm not an expert in every calculator ever made. So if you are using a different calculator, you are going to have to find a way to do it on your own. Okay. But, uh, you can, there are uh, guides here for the, at least the TI 83. 
okay uh and uh the ti86 okay so down here calculator help make use of it okay. uh there are a few helpful things that as you learn does that you may not know that it does one is that it gives you a list of upcoming events so it gives you a sense of a calendar right so all the things that are assigned are listed here so homework one the for the practice respondus exam you can go to the calendar itself and you can see that in the calendar it'll tell you i mean once we get to january it, it, it'll tell you all the things that are due it'll list them you can click into them directly you can also export this calendar to your g calendar your your school g calendar and it, and it will set up and give you reminders like straight to your phone from your normal calendar which i do because i have a lot of classes and it's hard to even for me sometimes to keep up this is a really really useful thing to do uh, to export this calendar you can take it directly to your google outlook whatever calendar you use it'll pop up on your phone and it'll and it will you know then you can set a reminder oh you know remind me three days before every homework is due things like that that's the only way to be successful in an online course you have to keep up you got to find some way to manage your own schedule and uh, as you learn actually has a really useful tool for that uh, so I highly recommend it. It will populate, that calendar will populate with all of your classes and all the due dates, uh, not just this one. So every class that's on as you learn, that calendar will populate for you. Okay. Uh, so it's really useful. All right. Let's go back to the syllabus really quick and talk about just the final few things. Okay. Let me just do this. Okay. Uh, so there's no attendance. I'm not going to keep track. Uh, you guys are adults. You signed up for an online class. I'm going to stop beating a dead horse, but you uh, you got to find your own method to be successful here. Uh, grades. Uh, the grades are pretty straightforward. Uh, each of the first three exams is worth 20%. The homework is worth 7.5%. The Excel assignment is worth 7.5%. So there are eight homeworks, which means each individual homework assignment is worth less than one point towards your final grade out of 100, one point for each homework less than that it they are not the homework in this class is not designed to hurt you it is only designed to give you an incentive to practice because you must practice the problems in this class or you will not do well okay so don't worry about really about the grades that you get in the homework they are not going to be the things that hold you back uh, and you get two attempts anyway so everybody could get a hundred on every homework you get the two attempts you do the solutions you do the second attempt boom you get 100 right right i'm not saying you have to uh but i'm saying that they're not designed to hurt you uh the excel assignment is a big deal because i want everybody to get at least some experience in excel so it's worth as much as the rest of the homeworks combined okay the final exam is worth 25 percent of the class and you must take all four exams no matter what okay that being said the final exam will replace the lowest of the first three exams if there is one right so if you get a lower grade on the first exam than you get on the final the final will count twice it will you will get your grade on the final and then the final grade will replace your low grade on the first exam and that will be how i calculate your grade right that is the only curve or rounding or any grade effect that i will do right and i'm not doing it to you okay as a student i hated curves i hated being uh adjusted up or down based on the whims of everybody else in the class i don't do that in this class i don't do it in any of my classes you will get exactly the grade that you earn in this class and you will get it uh um, and the only way you'll be able to improve that outside of just getting better scores is by doing better on the final than on one of the first three exams now that can be a huge huge boon if you totally bomb one of the exams then you don't have to freak out because if you do better on the final, it'll just wipe out that score and it'll be like as if it never happened. So you get one chance to screw up in this class, but you don't get two. Okay. So that being said, again, I don't round, I don't curve, I don't do that on any of the individual exams, I don't do it on the final, I don't do it on your final grade. You will get exactly what you see uh, and you will be able to calculate that from start to finish and I won't ever budge on that. Okay. The grade range is uh, the standard range. I don't give minuses, but I do give pluses. You, if you're in the, if, so say a, an 88 and an 89 is a B plus. I don't do B minuses. Everything else in the 80 range is a B. 
Uh, the only thing that's really important here is that if you are a finance and banking or a risk management and insurance major, you must get a C in this class to take any more advanced courses in your major. Okay. Everybody else, D's get degrees. Uh, if you're a finance and banking or risk management insurance, you must get a C. Uh, and if you're a finance major, then I hope you get a C. I hope you aspire to get better than a C as you're going to need all of this material for every other class that you take in the major. Okay. Now, uh, the, the Excel file um, that is on the As You Learn page right here, check my grade. Check my grade will allow you to check your grade at any point. It is a pre-built sheet that will automatically check and replace and calculate your final grade. Okay, so here's the instructions. Uh, this will tell you exactly how to handle this. Um, uh, you can enter in your grades just like this. Say you got a 95 on the first exam, you got a 47, you really bombed the second one, then you got a 94 on the third exam and an 80 on the final. You did 75% you know, of your homework, so 765 out of 1040, and you got a 90 on the Excel project. The final grade, and you can look up here, you can see this really gigantic, messy formula. Uh, it will automatically calculate your uh, final grade. So it'll add up everything, 20%, 20%. It will check which of the first three exams is the lowest. It will check if that exam score is lower than the final. And it will replace it automatically. So it will be like you got a 95, an 80, a 94, and an 80. It will tell you which exam was the lowest and got replaced right here. And it will calculate your final grade. You got an 86.2 here. That's a, that's a high B. Um, you can play around with this at any point so you can you know see what it looks like if you got say a lower score like say we got a 35 on the first exam now it'll say okay the first exam was lower than the second and the third so we replace the first exam obviously that's bringing our score down because then this 47 does not get replaced but notice that that's two really bad exams and you're still passing the class because the final is replacing it and you're only left with one really bad exam okay so uh, you can do that. Um, you can, this can really save you. Uh, I've seen some crazy things. Uh, I, I've seen like this, like 45. I had a woman do this. She got like a 50 on the second one. Then she basically got 195. She had done all her homeworks. So she basically got 100 on the homeworks and she got 100 on the Excel. And notice that that's basically an A. She got an A, so I have forgotten exactly what these first two exam scores were. But uh, maybe if I give her 100 here, right? oh, that's almost an A. Let's give her a 55 here. There you go, right? So imagine that if you did this, which albeit is hard, you can still pull an A out in the class, right? So this final exam replacement can be huge, but other than that, I don't do anything to your grade, okay? So you can always check that there. It's always listed right here. Exams. Uh, this is an online class, so I don't expect this to come up. There aren't any makeup exams. If you miss an exam for some reason, the final will replace that automatically. That'll be your your one uh, your one exam that gets replaced, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, obviously, laptops are required during the exams, uh, so some of this is uh, is not pertinent to the online version of this course. Um, uh, if you are registered with the Office of Disability, uh, please just get in contact with me so, we, so that we can. Uh, uh, handle your disability requests. Uh, that's all that stuff super easy online. Uh, we won't have any issues there, but I need to know so that I can handle it. Okay, so please get in contact with me. Uh, academic integrity. Uh, usually I blow through all this, but I had a bunch of, uh, unfortunately, uh, in the past semester, had to deal with uh, several instances of cheating online that had to be uh, handled through the university. Uh, I, I never want to do that. I hate it. Uh, it's awkward for everybody around. Um, you don't want to do it. Uh, it go, it uh, can be bad. Uh, it certainly goes on your record. Uh, don't cheat. Uh, I, I, there's no other way to handle it. You guys are adults. You signed up for the class. Hopefully you want to learn. I understand that you have other pressures and that online learning is not always ideal. Um, but uh, you have everything at your disposal in this class to do well. Uh, and you can always reach out to me if you feel like you're struggling. Uh, there's also tutoring and uh, we can set up any kind of group, uh, you know, learning zoom sessions uh uh between classmates to to, to help each other out um but uh if uh if we catch cheating we turn in uh and the the rash of uh cheating that we've had in the past semester is why we're now doing this monitored exam thing 
Uh, so unfortunately, the people before you have screwed it up for you. Um, but uh, don't continue that. Okay. Uh, other than that, that's all I have. Okay. So um, we will. Uh, you'll see some more emails from me coming up. Uh, you uh, should be uh, watching this first uh, lecture on chapter two. Uh, expecting the first homework to come up uh, next week, uh, and that uh, we will continue on at a quick pace. Uh, particularly important in this class is these first four chapters. These form the basis for everything else we do, and they will be the sort of the newest, weirdest material that you haven't thought about in the way that we're going to talk about it. Uh, so this first exam always catches students by surprise. It is almost always the worst exam uh, among students because most people don't take them ser don't take me seriously when I tell you that it's hard and that it's new and that it's a lot. Okay, so uh, take me seriously. Be the best class. I I hope everybody in this class gets an A. I am happy to give you. I am happy to uh, turn in all A's. Uh, I am also happy to turn in all F's. Well, not happy, but I'll do it uh, because you will get the grade that you earn. So take it seriously, and I hope everyone does really well. Okay. Uh, that's all for this intro lecture. This is way longer than my normal lectures. I Each piece of all the normal lectures is only 10, 12 minutes each. Uh, so break it down. Uh, don't try to watch them all at once. Don't overflow, overload your brain. Uh, you can take it slow and steady, and you'll be able to do really well in this class. Uh, if you have any questions, please send me an email. If you want to meet with me, please send me an email. Uh, otherwise, I wish you the best of luck, and uh, you'll be seeing and hear, hearing from me uh quite a bit more throughout the semester. Okay, uh, have a great week and, uh, and good luck.